All right, human chromosome 2 fusion. What's that about? Obviously, this is a bit different to the videos that I've been doing recently, um, but I'd have to introduce you to Dr. Jeffrey Tompkins, uh, who has a PhD in genetics from Clemson University in the United States. I think it's in South Carolina. Uh, and he's the, the go-to genetics guy for the Institute for Creation Research, or ICR, in Texas. Um, he and I have been going back and forth over the last... I don't know, maybe four or five years. Um, and he's certainly changed his appearance uh, over the last four or five years. Uh, he's obviously dropped about 20 kilos, uh, fixed a little gap in his teeth, got contact lenses, and looks like he's dyed his hair. So well done, Jeffrey. Uh, I, on the other hand, have put on 20 kilos uh, and grown some hair, which is awesome. Uh, and... The, the back and forth between uh, Jeff Tompkins and I kind of came to a stop um, when I forced him in, into a, a retraction. Um, he put some put out some research in 2013 claiming that the the overall similarity between the human and chimpanzee genomes was only about 70 percent. Uh, and I'm sure everyone's heard the the old story that we're about 98 percent similar. Um, so I worked out where he went wrong with that 70 percent figure. Uh, and it took him about a year to actually uh, finally admit to the mistake and put out this paper. Um, he still clings to a number somewhere around 85 or 88% though. Uh, and I've pointed out why that's wrong and explained it to him several times. Um, but I, I think I'm fairly sure that my emails to him just get filtered into the spam folder. Um, anyway, over the last couple of years, he's been concentrating more on trying to debunk the idea that our human chromosome 2 is the product of a telomere to telomere fusion. Um, and he's recently presented a paper to the International Creation Conference on the topic. And that paper is called Combinatorial Genomic Data Refute the Ho Human Chromosome 2 Evolutionary Fusion and Build a Model of Functional Design for Interstitial Telomeric Repeats. Uh, Jeffrey P. Tompkins, ICR, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there is his email address. So after watching this video, feel free to email him and tell him how shit his research is. All right, so let's have a look at the paper. Uh, I'm going to go through this paper basically paragraph by paragraph over the next few months. Um, so this is in the introduction. Uh, the idea of human chromosome 2 fusion is strongly promoted despite the fact that all known chromosome fusion events in extant mammals involve satellite DNA and breaks at or near centromeres. Uh, all genetic data in living mammals up to this point show that telomere to satellite DNA or satellite DNA to satellite DNA are the hallmark signatures of naturally occurring but rare chromosomal fusion sites in nature, not telomere to telomere fusions. All right, so... I jumped on PubMed, which is basically a huge database of scientific literature, and seriously just typed in the words telomere, telomere fusion. Uh, and there are two papers on the very first page of results. Uh, the first one over here, number five, um, talks about a telomere to telomere fusion in chromosome six uh, of the domestic pig. And the second one over here uh, explains uh, or describes multiple telomere fusions in the genome of Hartman zebra, which is an equid, or a horse slash zebra slash ass. Um, so let's have a quick look at both these papers to see how they conclude that these are telomere to telomere fusions. All right, so first one, uh, from 1996, by the way. Um, so there's really no excuse for Dr. Tompkins to, to miss these. Uh, all right, so quoting from the abstract, uh, likewise, we, we conclude that pig chromosome 6 was most likely derived by a telomere to telomere fusion of ancestral chromosomes homologous to Babarusa chromosomes 6 and 14. All right, so, one second. Uh, all right, so why do they think that? Um, so recently, the presence of interstitial telomeric sequences in band Q22 of pig chromosome number 6 uh, was reported. This observation is similar to a situation reported in band Q13 of human chromosome 2, in which two inverted arrays of telomeric sequences in a head-to-head -head arrangement are present precisely at the fusion site of two ancestral ape chromosomes. Uh, it is unclear whether the chromosome fusion event in the pig chromosome 6 region is recent in evolutionary terms, and if so, whether it was a telomere-telomere fusion event or not. These questions are addressed in the present paper by a comparative study of the chromosomes of the pig and babarusa. All right, so 
Now, this is further down in the paper, and what we're looking at here is looking at pig chromosome 6, which is this one, and then babarusa chromosome 14 and 6. And the first thing to look at is how these banding patterns uh, match with the pig chromosome 6. Uh, so you can see like the dark area and then light and then dark match off with this. Um, and then babarusa chromosome number 6 matches fairly well with the rest of pig chromosome 6. Um, if you want to get more uh, fine-grained, uh, you can see these markers here that bind to specific DNA sequences. Um, so BHT164 is, is found right on the tip of Babarusa number 14, uh, and BHT10.3 is found right on the tip of Babarusa 6. Uh, on the pig chromosome number 6, uh, they're found right next to each other. So that's pretty good evidence, uh, and it fits the theory that this was a telomere-telomere fusion. Um, if you don't know what a telomere is or what a telomeric repeat looks like uh, in mammals or in actually in uh, um, chordates, um, it is the sequence TTAGGG. Uh, if I'll actually leave a link to a video by Jackson Wheat in the description. Um, he goes through a little bit about what telomeres are, um, how telomerase works, uh, and why telomeres are important. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Uh, and yes, that is my actual number plate on my car. Um, so if you see me driving around Sydney, you know, you'll know that it's me and you'll know what it's all about. Um, all right, so next one. Um, so what a telomere to telomere fusion would look like is basically the end of two chromosomes jammed up against each other. Uh, and the telomere repeats are in the form TTAGGG, repeated, repeated. Um, and if you know anything about DNA, uh, each nucleotide is paired up uh, with an opposing and complementary nucleoside. So T always pairs with A, A with T, uh, G with C, and C with G. Uh, there's also a directionality to DNA. Uh, so when these two ends of a chromosome uh, join and fuse together, uh, they do so kind of in reverse, if you can see the, the diagram. Uh, so when they do actually fuse together, it looks like this. So you'll see a bunch of TTA, GGGs on one side, followed by a bunch of the complement to that sequence, which is CCC, TAA on the other side. All right. So um, here's just a page basically of random DNA. Uh, but you'll see that the DNA alphabet has four characters, uh, A, C, G, and T. Uh, and pig chromosome number six has 171 million DNA letters. Uh, and if you do some simple statistics, uh, the likelihood of any six character sequence occurring by chance is one in four to the power of six, uh, which is one in 4,096. So basically every 4,000 characters, you'll find by chance one of these TTA GGG uh, motifs. Um, so if you had a random string of 1 million DNA letters, uh, you'd expect to see about 244 copies. Um, but what I did uh, is actually go through pig chromosome 6 with a bit of uh, software that I wrote and pulled out every single occurrence of either TTA, GGG, uh, or the complement, CCC, TAA, and put each occurrence into a bin of uh, 1 million. So every occurrence between 0 and 1 million uh, letters, I would stick that into bin number one. Every occurrence between one million and two million, stick into bin number two. And that's basically what this graph is. So you can see that the average uh, is roughly around about that 244 uh, occurrences that we calculated previously. But the thing that sticks out like dog's balls is this big spike here around the 63 million mark. Right, we, we have about uh, 1,700 TTA GGGs and about 1200 CCC TAAs. Um, so I went and looked at that precise location and found uh, that the location is about 63.24 million into the chromosome uh, and found all where the, the TTA GGGs were all butted up against the uh, complement CCC TAA. Um, the things to take away from this is that there are a large number of these repeats, uh, far more than what you would find uh, by pure chance, obviously. Secondly, they are found in a head-to-head -head configuration. So TTA, GGG butts up against the complement, the reverse complement. 
um, and it occurs at the junction between sections of DNA that are on separate chromosomes in the related species, which is the Babirusa. So they are separate in the Babirusa and joined in the pig. So that's pretty clear evidence that this is a, a telomere to telomere fusion. So that is one. Uh, the second one is the uh, Hartman zebra, and the paper is called Subchromosomal Karyotype Evolution in Equidae, which is horses and zebras and donkeys and stuff. Uh, so straight up in the abstract, it goes, our results indicate that the prevailing type of fusion in Equidae is centric fusion. Uh, tandem fusions of the type telomere to telomere occur almost exclusively in the karyotype of Hartman zebra and are characteristic of this species evolution. All right, so here's a, a phylogenetic tree of the horses and the asses and the zebras. And you'll see that the, the horses have around 60 chromosomes, uh, the donkeys have about 50 to 60, and then the zebras have less. But this one, Equus zebra, uh, only has 32 chromosomes. So you'd, you'd kind of expect to see a lot of uh, chromosomes joined together uh, if that's their, their chromosome number. Um, and looking at this paper, uh, I'll just explain this um, diagram first. So here is uh, EZH is Hartman zebra and ECA is Equus cabalis, which is the domestic horse or the you know normal horse. Uh, so Hartman zebra chromosome one, and it basically uh, maps which chromosomes from the horse uh, correspond to uh, Hartman zebra chromosome one. So you can see. This little section uh, from, from horse chromosome 4 matches here. Horse chromosome 29 matches here, 27 here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and what we're looking for here uh, is locations where the end of one chromosome, so the end of 11P, butts up against the end of chromosome 27. Uh, and that is likely to be a telomere, telomere fusion, uh, as opposed to something like this, where you've got this, this is a, a marker for a centromere on chromosome 6, and the centromere for chromosome 25 still have fused into one chromosome, but not at its telomeres. Uh, so this one uh, is a telomere-telomere fusion. This one here is also a telomere-telomere. This one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here, uh, and this one here. This one I've put in red. Um, even though the diagram would suggest that it is a centromere to telomere fusion, uh, it is counted as a telomere telomere fusion, and it's probably beyond the scope of this video at least to explain why that is. Uh, so I'll just read out this section from the paper. Uh, it is noteworthy that seven out of the eight telomere telomere fusions have occurred in Hartman zebra, and the last one, which is uh, Equus cabalis 4p31, this one here, uh, occurred in the lineage leading to zebras and asses. So this is shared by all zebras and the donkeys and stuff. Uh, or it goes on. It is not coincidental that six interstitial telomeric sites have been localized in Hartman zebra 1p, which is this, 1q, which is this, uh, 2q, which I would say is that one. So this is where a telomere has joined to a centromere. Uh, so there are telomeric repeats found there. Uh, in 5Q, which I would say is that one, uh, 6Q, that one, and 11Q, which is that one. So this, while we don't actually have a, a proper genome sequence for this species, uh, I think Tompkins would be uh, pretty scared to make any sort of bet as to whether we would find head-to-head uh, -head telomeric repeats in uh, these locations. So I would say that is two uh, tell me a tell me a fusion um, species that have fusions uh, which makes his claim that all known chromosome fusion events in extant mammals involve satellite DNA and breaks at or near centromeres false <laughs>